Hello friends, web series recap here. After a long wait, Marvel's most awaited series Moonlight has just been released. Moon Knight is a new series from the Marvel Universe that is based on Egyptian mythology, and in this series, the ancient Egyptian god incarnate and chooses a man to get his work done, or in other word it can be said that he incarnated to punish the bad guys. And if we talk about the overview of this movie, then this is the story of an ordinary boy who is living his struggling life, who had neither any friend nor any girlfriend to share his words. And if there was anyone in his life, it was his pet, fish, and his mother, who lived far away from him. Moreover, he is also troubled by the fact that, after waking up from sleep, he used to find himself in another place. But before explaining this series, let's discuss about some important characters, and some main points so that you don't face any problems in understanding this series. So first of all we get to know about Kansu. If we talk about Kansu, then he is an ancient Egyptian god, who works to protect people and punish bad people, and in this series, Kansu incarnates as Moon Knight. The second confusing name is Amit. And the meaning of Amit is, devourer of the death, whose job is to test the heart of the people and punish them, and this work is accomplished by Arthur Harrow, a follower of Amit. So let's solve the mystery of this interesting series without wasting much time. So at the beginning of this series, we are shown an unknown person, who has a tattoo on his hand and also he is drinking something in a glass. And after finishing the drink, he breaks the glass by placing it in a handkerchief. And after that, he puts those pieces of glass in his shoes and goes somewhere. After this, we are shown, the logo of Marvel Studios, and the scene of this series shifts, and we are shown the main character of this series, Stephen Grant. Who is waking up from sleep? When he woke up, we saw that, his feet were chained in sand or scattered around his bed, as well as a long sticker pasted on his door. And all these strange things are done so that Stephen can confirm that he has not gone to some other places during his sleep. Now the scenes of the series shift, and let's look at Stephen's daily routine in which, he first feeds his pet, fish, while talking to his mother. After that, he gets on the bus and leaves for his job. On reaching his job location, it is revealed that he works in an Egyptian museum. As Stephen enters in the museum, he sees a little girl, who is putting a piece of paper into a small pyramid. Seeing her doing this, he stops her and tells her like a tourist guide that, according to Egyptian mythology, after the death of people, God tests their hearts, and finds out which person will go through the way of heaven, and which one will go through the field of hell. After listening to him, the little girl asks him, what have you felt, when he was going through the path of hell? On hearing that, Stephen tells that, he is not dead yet. While he is talking to the little girl, his superior, whose name was Dona, comes over and scolds Stephen, by saying that, no matter how hard you try, you can never get the job of a tourist guide. Upon saying this, Stephen starts his work, which reveals that Stephen used to sell toffees to tourists, who came to the museum. At the same time, a girl comes to Stephen and says, do you remember that, this Friday we are going on a date? Although Stephen is shocked by her words because he did not know anything about this date, he feels happy that, he also has a girl in his life. After this, Stephen finishes their work, and goes to Donna again. And on reaching there, Donna scolds him again and says that, if he does not come to the job on time from tomorrow, then he will have to work overtime. After hearing scolding from Donna, he leaves from there and sits near a street artist, and tells him about his life and that girl. After talking, for a while, he gives her some money and leaves for his house. After reaching home, he again pastes the sticker on his door, and comes to his bed, and starts listening to some audio and at the same time he starts solving the puzzle. He falls asleep shortly, and finds himself injured with his broken jaw, at some unknown place in his dream. While he is correcting his jaw, he hears the sound of some unknown identity, and at the same time, he also sees a golden-colored pendant i.e. a scarab in his pocket. And at the same time we saw, the Egyptian god, Kanchu. At the same time, Stephen is attacked by some people, 
and he escapes from there and hides in a crowd to save himself from the attackers. Then here we can see the same person who was seen in the beginning of the movie, who is walking as a priest and people start bowing their heads after seeing him. And that priest comes there and says that, this world has to be made heaven, but it will be possible only if you guys support in this work. And by saying this, he asks the people present there to get his soul tested. Just then a man standing there, puts his hand in the hand of that priest, to test his soul, and then a scale-like tattoo lying on the priest's hand shakes, and turns green, which shows that he is a noble man. After which a woman standing nearby, goes to him to test her soul, and addresses that piest as Harash, on which the priest says that you can call me, by the name of Arthur. And here, it is clear that, the priest's name is Arthur and then he starts examining the soul of that woman. But this time the tattoo on his hand turns red, which shows that, the woman is not of good heart. And that woman dies at the same time. Stephen was watching the whole incident, standing there, and was trying to avoid the attackers too. In the meantime, one of the attackers comes to Arthur and tells that, he could not find Stephen and maybe he is hiding somewhere in this crowd. At the same time, Arthur in his own language tells all the people standing there to bow down to Amit, which Stephen does not understand and he is caught. And Arthur calls him ahead, and asks Stephen for that golden pendant. Hearing this, Stephen tries to give the golden pendant from his pocket, but some unknown identity prevents him from doing so. Here Stephen is unable to give the pendant even after wanting it. With this act of his, Arthur's men, try to snatch the pendant from Stephen, but again that unknown identity dominates Stephen, and kills the people standing there. After which Stephen starts running away with an ice cream van parked nearby to save his life. Seeing him running, Arthur's men follow him, and they try to snatch the pendant from him, but when Arthur's men try to kill Stephen, that unknown identity, dominates Stephen and saves from the attackers of Arthur. Just then, he wakes up, and finds himself in his room and takes a sigh of relief. That's when he remembers that, the girl with whom he is about to go on a date. And he goes to the hotel to meet her and starts waiting for her. But not finding that girl there, he calls her, and that girl tells him on the call that, we were going on a date on Friday and not on Sunday. Upon hearing him, Stephen is a little confused about, where he was for the last two days. In this dilemma, he goes to his house, and again surprised to see his room in disarray. Just then, his eyes fall on the wood of the wall that was broken, and upon seeing the broken wood, Stephen checks it out, where he finds a mobile phone with a key, and got little bit surprised to see. Then he checks the call history, in which he gets some missed calls from a girl, named Layla. Before he could understand anything, again a call came from the same girl, Layla. And when Stephen picks up that call, Layla asks him, Mark where have you been all these days? I have been looking for you, for so long and I thought you had died. After listening to Layla, Stephen asks her why did you call me Mark? While he is talking, to Layla, he hears someone's voice, who was calling him by his name. He follows that voice to find that person, but not finding anyone in his house, Stephen got scared, and on leaving the room, he runs towards the elevator. Where he first sees that unknown identity i.e. Khonshu, and on seeing Khonshu, he got completely horrified. And from this, the scene shifts to where, Stephen is shown traveling in the bus. But still Stephen could see, Khonshu, everywhere on the road, which he had seen the day before. He somehow reaches the museum, where he is horrified to see Arthur again, because it was the same person, who was testing people's souls in his dreams. Seeing her, he complains to the security guard standing nearby, but he realizes that, the museum has been taken over by Arthur's people. Arthur then begins to test Stephen's spirit, by holding Stephen's hand in his hand. But this time, the scales on Arthur's hand fail to test Stephen's spirit because, Arthur senses some unknown power in Stephen's body, and Arthur lets Stephen go without harming him. Now the scene shifts from here, where Stephen is going back to his home, after finishing his work, but after hearing the sound of an animal in the museum, Stephen goes after that voice. He is following that voice, but at the same time, 
a very dangerous creature resemble like a fox attacks on him, and try to kills him to snatch the golden pendant. But Stephen somehow, after saving his life, he runs away and hides in a toilet. Then again, he hears the voice of another unknown identity, which was hidden inside him and tells Stephen to, hand over your body to me, I will save you from that. On the other hand, that creature is trying to break the door of that toilet. He had no idea what to do, and eventually surrenders his body to another identity, which was hidden inside him. After which, the second identity is revealed as, Mark Inspector who kills the creature. And with this strong suspense, this series ends at this point. I hope you enjoy my explanation video of this series. And stay connected to my channel for next episode of this series. Thank you.